Good afternoon. Getting my second dose of caffeine because I'm afraid we're going to need it. It is pull day and it's going to be a unique pull day. We're going to use one move we've been using a fair amount and it's been effective. We're going to use another move we have not yet employed in this quarantine series. Uh, but upon demoing first couple sets, the theory matches the experience. I feel exactly where I need to feel and we're going to get super toasty with this one. And a lot of these self-initiated movement workouts where we're pulling the towel against our leg pressure, which we will do today, it requires a lot of that self-fight and it's not always easy. And I even, uh, you know, I catch myself a lot of the time, especially just demonstrating on screen and not having to show anybody how much I'm actually pushing other than the grimace on my face, which of course can be acted, it can be faked. I catch myself not really pushing with all I need to push to get that heavyweight experience. So today we're going to do a lot more volume with lighter pressure so that even if we're pushing 10%, 20% of what we could, we're going to get a lot of work through all the repetitions we're going to do. And I haven't quite yet done the math, but we'll do it together at the end of the routine and see how many hundreds of reps we're about to get. A uh, quick estimate, it's going to be something like, ooh, we're getting hundreds of reps. All right, we'll just put it at that. Let's wait till the end. We'll calculate it together more precisely. We need a towel that you can trust, a towel that will tolerate tensile testing with tenaciousness. Tenacity, if you will, I believe. I don't think tenaciousness is a word. It was just coined. You need a chair that's sturdy, and when I say sturdy, I mean it's not fluffy on the bottom. It's got kind of a rigid frame. And we do not need a back. It doesn't even need to be a chair. The butt part of it should be about standard chair butt side height. It could be a folding chair. Mine is this folding lawn chair that you know I have from Ikea. I'm only going to be using this butt part of it. And let me just give you the preview right off the bat. Spoiler alert. We're going to have our hands on this edge, and then the butt is going to slide off. And we're going to have this type of posture. All right. So whatever you need for that. If I had a nice wooden coffee table that was super sturdy, I would probably do it on the edge of that. Uh, if I had a wooden bench... Maybe that would be the situation. Maybe I have some outdoor space with a couple small steps, and I would just do it on the top of the three or four steps. Let's see. An office chair that wheels around would probably work too, although you're going to have a little bit of extra stability, responsibility with that. Low tables. And I'm sure I covered enough options for all of us to get it in. If I were home, I'd be using a couple of these low wooden chairs that I have, or I'd be using my little entertainment center uh, ottoman situation that we've got, or even the edge of our couch frame. I'd go right to the front of the couch, put my hands on that frame, give it a little test, make sure it's gonna hang in there for me, and then we'll be able to put the pressure in that fashion. So just those two things, the chair or something you could sit on, put your weight on with that edge, and a good strong towel. And I think I'll go ahead and drop my shoes off. We're not really going to need them. This is very, very simple. We're really only doing two moves. We'll start with the isometric version of each of them, and then we'll do the dynamic version. For many, many reps, like I said, super high volume. Uh, lats will be the target. It's been difficult to target the lats, obviously. We don't have much heavy stuff to pull down from. I can't expect everybody to have a pull-up bar, nor even be able to do a pull-up. So that's out of the picture. What do we do? We're going to get freaky today and really work on the depression and the retraction of the shoulder blades. 
but these scapular, lapped, focused dips. Very strange, very difficult. You'll feel it. You'll absolutely feel it. All right, so make sure you get those things. Get your hydration nearby. Once we get into the routine, there will be very little rest time. We have so much volume to get through. Uh, we'll have to go pretty quickly and really break no breaks. Break the rest out of this one. Um, if you did one of those first pull parties in the quarantine series where we did the one arm row over and over again, super heavy for like 30 minutes straight, you'll be familiar with this approach today. Last sip of coffee and then we crack it. Excellent. Start with a lat stretch. We're gonna sit, you can sit on that surface of yours, whatever works. I'm here on the floor, cross-legged. I'm gonna reach up and over while this free hand goes to the ground or goes to my thighs if I'm in the chair. And the goal is to get this border of the body from the elbow to the hip to be as long and as curved as possible. The lat lines that border, so the longer we make that corner of the body, uh, the greater, the deeper lat stretch we'll get, and the better warm up we'll experience. Left hand on the floor or on the chair next to us. Pull down and curve the spine this way. Drive the elbow into the holster so we get a squeeze on that side. Flex everything. And then with strong opening of the hand, you're almost shaking in the fingers, we're going to reach out and make the curve the opposite direction and find the stretch. Pull down, and if you did the buddy version of the stuff yesterday, and reach, you might feel that lat already coming in to today with a little bit of soreness or achiness. We did use the big lat muscle with those buddy squat rows, which Adam and I were just getting crushed from. So we'll double up. It's all good. Might as well, right? High frequency is a good thing. Speaking of high frequency, I read a, uh, I want to say it was a USA Today article yesterday, and the title was, Don't Work Out Too Much During Quarantine. <laughs> Come on, guys. Let's be honest. This is pretty damn good for us to have something to do, to have a mission. Furthermore, to push our bodies and our minds. What could be greater? It is quite difficult to overtrain. Of course, there are many limitations to that phrase. We could have issues, predispositions, injury, uh, all kinds of stuff that would limit the amount we should healthy train. Um, however, I would assume most of us viewing this stuff, these seven days a week home workouts are exactly what the doctor ordered. This is good medicine, right? It's up to you, of course, to decide whether it feels good or it's too much or it's not enough or it's too much on certain parts of your body or on your heart or whatever. Uh, that's up to you. But I'm feeling wonderful. I know a lot of you are feeling wonderful from the messages I'm getting and the feedback. And you don't have to do every one. Remember, you could do every other day, you can mix it in, do whatever you want, you can do half the routines. It's all up to you, all right? So realize it's good medicine. We should be pushing ourselves on the other arm now. Squeeze, lengthen. And if anything, we should be inspiring, proactive health philosophies in ourselves and our friends and our family. And for me, that means showing a workout every single day. So while it is good to be cautious and, and we deserve caution and care, it's also great to push ourselves a little bit every single day or close to every single day. So don't let the haters stop you. Let's embrace this. And work the lats today. It's going to be nice. 
couple more of these reaches. Long, squeeze. And you'll rejoice knowing the volume will be so quickly accumulated. I'll have to shut the hell up today and not preach too much. That's why I'm getting it in right now during the warm up. <laughs> preach! Uh, one last item, two last items of preaching. Thank you for your involvement in the NBC LA News situation we got yesterday. Um, super fun. I loved it. Thanks to Mike for making it all happen and his producers. And thanks to all of you for sending in fun footage and getting it in. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, go to my Instagram or the Nomad Active Instagram. Check it out. And furthermore, right after today's stream, uh, we will be able to offer the new strong t-shirts in pink and navy. Yeah, Okay. Step one. Bring out my timer. And I'll drop the camera a little bit. Go to that chair or that surface. I'm going to set a two minute timer. This will be the first real difficult move. And we're going to use this to build the dynamic move that we're going to use quite a bit today. I have my hands right on that front edge. And now I'm sliding my butt off. And my elbows are completely locked. So it shouldn't be a ton of tricep work. There is some there. There's definitely some there. But it, it's not uh, intense tricep work. If we just keep them locked, we're good to go. If they're bent, we're going to overtax the triceps. Okay? So my butt is well off. And it's important that we get this angle, that we're not completely upright, and we're definitely not leaning forward. We have to slide the butt off so we can have the body lean forward and the arms behind us. Now I'll shrug. And then I'm going to push the ground away from me. And I'm puffing my chest up and forward. So my arms and my shoulder blades are back and down. Just like where they would be at the end of a pull-up or a pull-down. Down and back. Right? Looks like I'm a little bit out of color balance for that to be good. So let's see if we can turn this away so you can see better detail. That's a little cleaner. Also tuck the shirt in so you can see the hips. All right, it's a two minute hold there where the body is off that edge and we're pushing the ground away. That's it. We're in that position for two minutes. Pretty basic. Of course, if you need a break, just put your butt down on that, on that surface. Wow, a lot of whitewashed color today. That should help too. Great. Get the surface. We should feel low in the lats. Down there. We're going to start in five, four, three, two. Slide off. Push the ground away and the chest out. Uh, needless to say, the pressure is low in my hands, in the heel of the hand. So my fingers are off that edge. Turning the fingers out. We shouldn't have too much of this angle. Make sure it's outward. And the chest is puffed. We can't just be here passively. we got to really push the chest out through the gap and down. And that's how we're going to get the lats working today. All the muscles that depress and retract the shoulder blades. And that's all that upper back stuff. Same stuff that holds our posture, holds our neck up. And eventually we'll create pull-up strength once we get back into the gym. Make sure to keep that angle. Don't allow yourself to get too upright. So we'll get a little glute and hamstring work just by providing these poses today. seconds remaining. And once we finish this one, it's ah, uh, that big volume I was talking about, we're cracking on. We'll see how quickly we can get it done. I'm afraid it'll take a while, but it is what it is. 20 
20 seconds, starting to feel the back side of my upper body, starting to feel that lat corner behind my armpit. Make sure we're leaning this way. We're not upright. Three, two, one, relax. Some strange isolated feelings. We're used to using the lats dynamically and really exploiting their role of moving the upper arm into the body uh, to isolate their function of depressing the shoulder blade and retracting it. It's a little bit different. However, we're getting that work. So perceive the weird stuff we're doing today. Get into it. Really, really go for the feeling of it. We're going to have plenty of repetitions to go for feeling. You know when we do super heavy days, it's not necessarily about the feeling of burn because the few reps, the high intensity, the focus on the form that's necessary, uh, we're too distracted by those intense things to really get into how it feels for us physically. Today, it's not going to be that. Today, we're getting a lot of light volume. So try your best every single rep, every single set to analyze where do I feel this fatigue accumulating in my body? Which little section? Which little muscle? And then is it symmetric about the sides? Is there pain? Is it good? And then how much deeper can we get to those feelings throughout the sets? So we just did the isometric hold the scapular retraction, depression, dip. Now we're going to do 20 repetitions of it. And let me show you what I mean. This light is still killing me. It was a bad shirt color choice. Let's see if this can help. Yeah, a little bit better. And then I'll angle this straight at me. Showing you I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Damn, that shirt was just too bright. Okay, here we are. Get in the dark a little bit. Corner, butt forward. Now I'm shrugging the ears up and then I'm pushing the body out. Really nothing else changes except for this sliding shoulder blades. Join me for 20, 20, 19. 18, down and back, 17, big collarbone, big chest, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, think back and down, 9, 8, 7, isolating the left, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, drop the butt. Grab the towel. Now we have our one arm rows. I'm going to start with the right arm, grabbing the left foot, holding both ends of the towel with that right hand. We've all done this one before, gratuitously, if you've done any of the quarantine workouts. Sitting on the front edge of the workout, on the head of the chair. Make sure the arm is straight, the leg is straight. So we're twisting. And with a moderate amount of resistance, we're going to do 20 repetitions like this. Make sure we drop the shoulder low. Drop the elbow down into the holster. That's going to help us get more of that lat action. Now it's dynamic. Now it's a little bit more in the upper arm action. Let's go for 20. 20. Self-initiate. 19. Make the leg force you to work. 17. 16. 15. 14. 13. 12, this is a good pace right here, 11, not too heavy, 10, 9, but some muscle action for sure, 8, 7, 6, 5, drop it low, 4, 3, 2, 1, other leg, right away, take note, what do you perceive, if you did the right stuff, that right lap should be way heated up compared to the left. Now let's see if we can match it. Right foot, left hand, reach out with the straight left arm, and here we go. Pull low, elbow into the holster, down. 19, 18, it's up to you to create resistance. 
16, but that leg, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, drop it down, 7, curve the spine a little bit towards the pulling arm, 5, 4, it's like an oblique crunch, 3 in that direction, 2, 1, drop the towel, hands on the edge, slide them up forward, here's where you're going to learn the pattern, and we have 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, big chest, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, down and back, 2, 1. Take a seat, grab the towel, let's switch up the order. Right foot, left hand, straight arm reach, the leg is the one that's giving you the weight machine effect. Here we go, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, drop it low, 12, 11, work that grip, 10, 9, 8, 7, make it difficult, 6, within this speed, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, switch it up. Left foot, right hand. Straighten that right arm out. Grab the double towel bundle, which is difficult on those forearm flexors. Pull down. 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. Create the resistance. 11, 10. Nine, we're rowing the boat. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Once again, it's up to you. You can make that very, very heavy, still within the same speed. If your leg wants to push, especially in that out direction. Here we go, round three. That means 18 of each. Flare the fingers out. Drop the butt off the edge and forward. Look at that angle. Shrug and drop it away from the body. 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. It's not a big move. 7, 6, Five, proceed, four, where do you feel it? Three, two, one. Drop down. <sighs> Capture the left foot, right hand. Big reach. Get ready for 18 reps and begin. 18, 17, low, 16, 15, constant tension, 14, 13. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good. Capture the right foot, left hand. Take a good grip. Pull low, elbow down, and curve the spine in that direction. We'll be contracted. Begin. 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. Make it heavy. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, heavy. Three, two, make that leg work. One, good. Here we go. 17s now. Drop the butt off. Lift a little. 
If you want it heavier, you'll go further out. Dip and push. 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Start to feel this one. 4. It's strange. 3, but I feel it. 2, 1. It doesn't feel like a big move. Because it isn't. But there's tension where it needs to be. Let's capture the right foot, left hand, 17 repetitions of low, one arm, self initiated rowing. Begin. 17, 16, 15, 14, 13. You decide. 12, how heavy? 11, with every single rep. 10, it's your responsibility. Eight, seven, you're in full control of this. Six, five, four, and if you're working hard, three, that last should be two already. One, locked up, already tightened up and puffed, full of blood and neurological activity. Right arm, left foot, 17, go. 17, 16, 15, 14. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Drop it. On to the 16s. Sit forward. Get the hands right. Dip, push, here we go. 17, 16, 15, 14, sorry, it's the 16s. So we'll do one, one fewer, and I'll go down to 12 now. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good. And depending on your shoulder flexibility, you might feel like you're not moving at all during that one. But as we found out with the warm-up, just holding in that position is enough to get the lats working. So even if it's like a little baby rep that you feel, keep doing it. Stick with it. I know it's a strange move. Trust me on that one. We will make something happen. Right foot, left hand onto the 16s. Begin. 16. 16. 15, 14, 13. Make it work though. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Use your leg pressure. 5. Test yourself. 4. Add strength to that lap. 2, 1. Switch legs. Right foot. Sorry, left foot, right hand, reach out, get ready for 16, finish the 16s, and pull. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, take responsibility, 8, 7, 6, make it a challenge, 5. Four, it's all yours. Three, two, you've got the power. One, drop it. Fifteens now, starting with that dip. Hands on the edge, feet forward, however far out you want. Even if it feels small, do it. Shrug and push. Fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, straight elbows. Eleven, ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, pump that chest, five, four, three, two, one. Take a seat. Left foot, right hand, sets of 15. Grab the towel, straight arm, and three, two, begin. 15, 14, 13. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Switch legs. Right foot, left hand, 15 reps. Begin. 15, 14, 13. You know what you have to do. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Make it work. 4, 3, 2. Take on the challenge. 1. Beautiful. Love that. Dip, 14, 13, 12, <coughs> 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Right foot, left hand. Grab it. 14 reps, go. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, low elbow, 9, self initiate, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Switch legs, left foot, right hand, 14 reps, begin. 14, 13, 12, make it heavy, 11, 10, 9, self-initiate, 8, <laughs> 7, 6, had to think about that one, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, excuse my terrible sense of humor, here we go, 13, lucky number 13, get way out there, even if it's mini, Initiate the movement. Shrug and push. 13, 12, 11. Chest out. 10, 9, 8. I want it to be heavier. 7, so I'm walking out further. 6, 5, 4. Bigger lever to fight. 3, 2, 1. Take a seat. Grab the left foot, the right hand. Lucky 13. Get them. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, self initiate, 7, 6, 5, 4, constant pressure from the foot, 3, 2, <clears throat> and 1. Good. Capture the right foot with the left hand. <clears throat> Finish those 13s and go. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Perfect. Drop it. On to the 12s. Fingers out. Dip forward. Let's get them. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Starting to feel it. Right foot, left hand. Straight arm for 12. Let's do it. 12, 11. 10, 9, self initiate, 7, 6, 5, 4, keep moving, 3, 2, 1, left foot, right hand, if you're not sweating, crank that shit up, it's up to you, like I said, you know how these go, go, 12, 11, 
10, 9, self initiate, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 11 dips. Again, 11, 10, 9, 8, down and back, 7, chest out, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Take a seat. Left foot, right hand, 11 reps. As the sets get shorter, make them heavier of an experience. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Switch. Right foot, left hand. Grab it. Begin. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Pressure. 5. It's up to you. Four, three, two, one. Don't just go through the motions. We got to the tens now. Switch my angle. Let's get a crack. Arms, legs, ten. Palm stretch now. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Big chest. Six, five, four, three. Two, one, towel, right foot, left hand, straight arm for 10, heavier than usual, let's go, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Left foot, right hand, make it happen. Pull, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Self initiate, 5, 4, especially on the way out. 3, 2, 1, drop it. Get ready for nines. Begin, 9. Eight, we will get these done. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Left foot, right hand. Grab it, straight arm for nine. Go. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. Right foot, left hand. Get him. Nine. Eight with some pressure. Seven. Use your leg. Six. Make yourself five. Strong. Four. Three. Two. One. Eight. Get them. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Take a seat. Right foot, left hand, swapping the order. Eight reps. Let's make it heavy now. It's only eight. Eight. I'm going to slow it down. Seven, six, five. Time under tension. Four, three, two, one. Switch. Left foot, right hand. Get that double grip. Eight, heavy, slow. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one. Good. Drop. Seven now. 
Let's everybody get strict legs. Everybody walk those strict things out. Like a, a long leg glute bridge. Shrug and push. Good. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Take a seat. Right foot, left hand. Seven slow ones. Make them heavy. Let's grind. Seven. And curve the spine in that direction. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Beautiful. Left foot, right hand. Snag it. Don't let grip. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Six is now getting super short. Let's slow these down as well. Shrug. Push, five, push, four, push, three, push, two, push, one, push. Take that towel. Left foot, right hand. Only six, so make it heavy and slow. Let's go. Six, push, five. Four, push, three, push, two, push, one, yeah, other leg, six good ones, go, six, five, four, three, two, one. The fives now. We are in a home stretch. A lot of reps. Ready to straight your legs. Dip. And push. Five. Dip. Four. Dip. Three. Dip. Two. Dip. One. Right foot, left hand. Five, slow and heavy. Go, five, extend. Four, extend. Three, extend. Test your grip, extend. One, extend. Switch. Right hand, left foot. Go. Five. Extend. Four. Extend. Three. Pressure. Two. Constant taxing. Pressure. That's one. Squeeze. Good. Fours. Follow me with the speed. Nice and slow. Push. Up. Down. Two. Down, three, down, four, down. Left foot, right hand, four reps, the heaviest yet. I would love for some of us to lose the towel grip because we're pushing so hard with our foot. Find the limits, push them a little bit. Let's go. Four, push your grip. Three, see how much you can handle. Two, it's a battle between your leg and your hand. Last one, final round of that battle. Good. Right foot, left hand. Same concept. Crank it, test those limits. Go, pull, and push. Two, push. Three, push. Four, push. 
Good. Threes now. Go. Three. Down. Two. Down. One. Down. Right foot. Left hand. Three strong reps. Let's go. Three. Two. One. Three, two, one. Perfect. On to the twos. Get them. Two, one. Right foot, left hand. Two, push heavy. One, push heavy. Good. Switch. Get him. Two. Push heavy. One. Push heavy. Here we are at the end of the workout. Now we're going to do just like we did at the beginning. For this final rep. We're going to have a two minute hold here. Chest out, collarbone spread. Now we understand this position much, much more than we did 45 minutes ago. So let's drive and push, and lift and proud. Two minutes. And then we'll do a pull and a pull, and it's game over. So enjoy this now, get into it. We've done all that learning, all those reps of learning, what this one feels like. Now we can focus a little harder. Our perception of where it is is a little bit uh, more refined. Two minutes begin in three, two, go. Step away and sink first and then push the chest. And then the more we lift the butt and the more we walk the feet away, the more resistance we get. Just don't let the shoulder blades roll forward. Keep them back and down and proud chested the whole time. And those elbows are locked. And all the muscles underneath, inside, below, behind the shoulder blades are working to keep this position stable. As long as we puff that chest out and push the arms down and away, we're going to get what we need here. 30 seconds has passed. If you need to take a break, just take a seat. It's all good. One minute left. Feels much different than the one we did for warm up. Prouder, taller, more expansion. Enjoy that shake and the sweat. You have 45 seconds left. Proud, tall, wide collarbone. Big chest, sternum to the ceiling. 30 seconds. Hang in there mentally, physically. Develop your will, your discipline, your stubbornness. 20 seconds. Last 10, give me that big proud posture. Six, make an exit plan. Five, four, three, two, and step out. Oh. Oh. Good. Next, we have that row, one per arm. We're going to do a 30 second pull, followed by a 30 second negative. I'll give you updates. Let's start with the right arm and the left leg. Okay, we'll start with a 30 second in this direction and a 30 second in that direction. One rep, one minute per rep. Begin now, slow, slow and gradual. Start by finding the lat tension, drop your shoulder down, start bending that elbow. That's 10 seconds, one third of the way through the pole. 
15 seconds halfway through the pull. Use your leg and find the pressure you can tolerate. Five seconds left of that pull. Get that elbow behind your body and the chest puffed out. And now we start the extension. Start reaching out. And this is where we can turn the leg on a little more because you know we can tolerate more force in this direction. So turn that shit on. That's 20. Halfway. Push. Add more tension. It's up to you now. 10 seconds left on this arm today. Drop that shoulder down. Five, four, three, two, relax. Other leg, starting in five, four, three, two. Begin the pull, the other arm. Drop that elbow down, that shoulder down. That's 10 seconds in. 15 seconds in, halfway through the pole. Start getting that elbow level with the body. In the last 10 seconds to get it behind the body. Pull, 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 use your leg. And start extending. Final 30 seconds of the plan. Drop that shoulder down, that elbow down. Push with your leg. Final 20 seconds of work, so make it count. Make something out of this. Don't just go through the motions. Turn it on right now. Test your grip. Eight, seven, six, 100%. Five, four, three, two, one. Take that towel and dab yourself off. Wowzer. Okay, that was great, strange, effective over here, but of course, I know what I'm going for. Hopefully I relayed it to you effectively. Let me know right now in the comments, how was it? Did it work for you? I got real saucy with that one. Uh, of course, it depended on us as individuals doing that self-initiation, which is not easy. And these, are, these weird scapular retraction, depression drills, um, also a little bit complicated, a little more advanced coordination, uh, but everything was in the proper direction. So even if you were just holding those positions, you got some good work on a lot of these muscles on the back side of the upper body that haven't been so attended to during this quarantine. And you know, I appreciate your patience as I do my best to approach these things creatively. It's real simple in the gym. Want to work the lats? What do we do? Pull downs, pull ups, variations, basic. One arm dumbbell rows, low underhand barbell rows to the belly. Uh, tons of tools, right? Bands, all this kind of shit, buddy row. So many, so many tools. What do we do when we don't have tools? We have to create new ones. Uh, Ty says, felt the pulls a lot in the biceps more than anything else. Uh, you felt something, congratulations. You did work. I bet your biceps will get stronger, perhaps add a little bit of mass too. Uh, when it comes to pulls, you know, I preach this a lot in the gym if you were here during our on-site stuff that hopefully will resume soon. Uh, the pulling is one of these complex compound movements. When I say compound, I mean many joints working. The elbow, the shoulder socket, the free shoulder blade itself. Today we're going to get into the spine a little bit. A lot of shit going on, obviously fingers and wrist. Uh, we need to, when it comes to function, so let's say I'm pulling a rope. I'm helping somebody up, or I'm going for an arm drag from guard, and I'm really trying to pull somebody with the most force, the most speed, the most efficiency as well. We identify the largest, strongest muscles 
and we define those things by physiology, but also by physics, how they're aligned with the direction of our action. Um, the most capable muscles in that movement. For bench press and push-ups, the other day it was the pecs. That's the big one. So how can we maximize the use of this and minimize the use of the other weaker elements in the chain uh, becomes a question of form. So in the pulling, the big muscle today was, again, that lat some of the stuff behind the shoulder blade too. The bicep is simply a helper. It's a shock absorber. Uh, next time we do rows, Ty, and maybe repeat this workout or go back to some of our previous ones. And really, you know, you'll have an opportunity today when you open a cupboard or open a door or really anything uh, that is that pulling movement. I want you to make sure the forearm is completely parallel with the direction of your pulling. Parallel. It's on a track and it's sliding. Uh, the other visualization would be get rid of your forearm. There's nothing there. And all we have is the upper arm. And on that tip of the elbow, there's a hook that you can attach to stuff and pull that stuff back. Pull that stuff back. Both of those are, are good visualizations to make sure we call upon the lat and the back muscles, the most advantageous muscles in the pulling chain to do most of the work and minimize the other stuff like the bicep. If we're pulling and the forearm starts to get out of line in the flexion direction with the direction of pulling, then we're putting undue extra stress on the bicep. And that's probably why you felt some of that bicep work today because you were not only doing good pulling, which is awesome, you were probably cranking that elbow joint just a little bit. And even if it's from here to there, I'm going to feel that difference. And then critically, functionally, what ends up happening is we can't pull with any more strength than this can handle. So we're, in effect, limiting our pull strength. If you shut that down by putting the form in line with the pulling direction, then we can get those big, strong back muscles to work more, and we're not limited by the tiny bicep. This puny little muscle is just there as a helper. Uh, so think about that stuff. Next time you open the door, imagine if your form wasn't there, and we just had a rope attached to the elbow, and you hooked on, and we pulled back. Try to make the bicep less active. It's there. It's definitely working, and you feel I feel it. My bicep's hot right now. It got worked, but it's there as a helper. Um, just like the triceps are there as a helper during the pushing. If during my pushes and my bench press and my uh, push-ups, I keep this form in line with the pushing, the pecs get to do their work. They get to take the stage. If I bend the elbow even just a tiny bit in this direction, now I'm being limited by the tricep strength, the elbow tolerance, that, uh, that arm extension. So this would be a weaker pushing movement as opposed to getting the forearms in line. Make sense, Ty? Everybody else? That's critical. That's a critical thing for the pushing and the pulling. Of course, we have those same arguments uh, when we deadlift and squat and jump and all that other stuff. Different joints are involved, different considerations, but it's, it's very similar physics. All right. T-shirts, good question. Uh, Today, the order forms will be on the website. Uh, of course, there was some lag time getting in contact with my guys in LA. Uh, do they have stock? What's it going to look like? What are the prices? What's available as far as shipping goes? Um, free shipping, by the way. I'll get it to you, to your doorstep, whether it's me driving there or using first class mail or whatever. Uh, so don't worry about that. Um, those orders will be on the homepage, thenomadgym.com, thenomadgym.com. Uh, hopefully a little bit right after this or this evening. Um, I will blast it all over the Instagram. Of course, you know how I get all promotion like on the social medias. Uh, but uh, hit us up. All right. We're excited to provide that t-shirt. It's going to be a great way to wear a badge, a physical badge of what we're doing right now. Refusing.
to let these lifestyle limitations limit our lives completely. Uh, so wear it on your chest. You're strong. You can pick your color, navy or pink. I kind of want one of each. I'm going to probably buy one of each. And um, we're going to get those cracking right away. Obviously, the guys uh, at the t-shirt shop, Ultimate Shirt Company, are a little bit limited in their capacity, but they're going to get right to it for us. Hopefully, it's out quick, and I'll let you know right away when we can expect it. Uh, should be definitely within side two weeks. Hopefully faster. We'll see what we can do. Uh, thanks for your support. In the meantime, killer workout. Crush it. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you with Adam tomorrow for a little stretch action. Oh, yeah. One last little cheers to you. Spread the love, guys. Spread it out. You know what to do. See ya.